A question from Rosanna Geary, please. Is the increasing use of buy-to-lets as investments a major contributing factor to house price inflation? House price inflation, which is now Britain-wide, but particularly strong here in London, is buy-to-let uh, a major contributing factor? Um, Martin Sorrell. Um, it is a factor, but I don't think it's the only factor. There are a number of others. Uh, cheap money... Um, or low-cost money, low interest rates post Lehman, which is 2008, has been used to avoid further financial cast catastrophe and stimulate the economy. And as a result, that leads, that leads to bubbles in the economy. So that's one, it's not just buy to let, uh, which is politically a very astute approach, but does cause a little bit of a bubble in the housing market, the cheap money does. And last but not least, I think the most important factor is the success of London. Uh, London as a, as a capital city, as a focus for foreign companies, uh, as a, a place to work, uh, a multicultural society. Obviously there are infrastructure issues, obviously there are, there are healthcare issues, education issues, but generally as a place to locate a company and grow a company, it's extremely effective. And the UK economy is dependent to a far greater degree than many other economies on what we call tertiary industries. It's not primarily an agricultural country. It's not primarily a manufacturing country. It's a country that attracts services businesses. And London's boom uh, and London's strength and London house prices are a reflection of that. All right. Now, does that answer your question, Rosanna Geary? What's your view? About it yourself? Uh, partly. I, I strongly feel that perhaps something could be done uh, in relation to taxation. So maybe uh, increased taxation on rental income. And uh, also, I feel that uh, maybe there should be a restriction on the number of rental properties that an individual can own. Because I fully appreciate that there's a lot of investment coming into the country, and that can't be anything maybe more than a positive so, thing. So, but well, sure. All right. So, so, Sergio Javid, now you, you answer this because you were at the Treasury just well until yesterday. Um, um, well, uh, I haven't forgotten. She has a, she has a, a um, good a good point about the number of people who are buying to let, no, yeah. excluding other people from buying for themselves. No, I think, Rosanna, I understand her, her point, but I, I do think from the evidence that I've seen, the house prices aren't really driven by buy-to-let, only because they're a very small proportion of the total number of house sales that take place. Most of them are homes people buy you know, for their own uh, private uh, you know, main home use. But uh, the important point there is about the talk. There has been a lot of talk recently of a house price bubble. I don't think there is a house price bubble, but that's, you don't have to take my word for it. I think even more important are the independent people that look at this, and this is the Bank of England, and they have looked at this again and again, and they look at it on a very regular basis. They don't believe there's any evidence of a house price bubble. They recently pointed out, for example, that house prices on average are at 15% below in real terms from their peak. And, um, and, and a 20% but, a 20 percent, just over 20% rise in, in West London, so London no, as Martin, here for these as, people? As, as Martin said, London is different, and there are special factors that go into London, such as the huge number of cash buyers you will get into London from uh, overseas in particular, which is very difficult to have an impact on, even by changing interest rates, because they are uh, cash buyers. But it is important to remain vigilant about this, and we have given the Bank of England significant new powers to act if they see that there's a problem and there's a bubble developing nationally, because a bubble is ultimately in no one's but interest. But what can they do about Russian oligarchs coming in Stamp and buying for cash? You, you, yeah, we have, we have already increased stamp duties. And has that any effect? Yes, it has. Well, it, there, there are still house sales obviously still going on, but it, what it does mean is that as you increase the cost, it should have an impact on demand okay. as well. You sit up there. So um, I just wanted to illustrate this with a point um, around the house bubble. So I tried to buy a house in London uh, in December, but I couldn't afford it. The house price is around half a million for like a three bed property. Um, so I moved out of London, I'm going to commute in, uh, that's fine. From the time that I bought my house in December for 285, the company's just listed a new property exactly the same for 335. So within that short period of time, it's gone up by 50 grand. If that's not a bubble, then I don't, I don't know what uh, it is. And where is that? That's in Stevenage. In Stevenage. Billy Bragg. Well, I think that the problem with the buy to let is that um, now. Uh, individual pensions have more or less disappeared and if you put any money in the savings bank you're going to watch it disappear because of inflation. People are desperate to find something that they believe is going to 
give them some return. And obviously, in, in that sense, buying property does make economic sense. The knock-in effect of that, of course, in somewhere like London, is, is a, a housing shortage and, and a rise in the prices. I mean, you talk about the success of London, Martin. One in four households in London is on housing benefit because of the prices in London. And I think that in our... In our capital city, people, sh you know, people should be able to live here. People obviously want to work here. Well, uh, it's not helped by the fact that, um, you know, since the 1980s, councils have not been allowed to buy houses. After the, the social housing was sold off, uh, there's been a cap on, on building houses. And we're in a situation where, um, you know, the, the growth that we're getting is driven by household debt. Okay. And yeah. this is, you know, this but is not sustainable. One, one this is not a sustainable economic it, model. One part of it is supply. It's demand and supply. And yeah. where I would agree with you is that, that land banks have not been freed up. That there are certain institutions. Well, we need a land, land tax. Banks. We need a, a solid land tax well, no, but it's on people it's who are owning land. Land people like, own holding land right, and not well, developing And even <coughs> government, government national health has larger right. tracts of land than the Mayor of London. The woman there on the right. Yes, you. Um, I'd echo what the gentleman said earlier. I mean, in houses, the houses in the roads where, around where I'm living have gone up 38% uh, in the last 18 months. Um, and my concern is what happens to um, the provision of essential services in the area, teachers, you know, uh, nurses, where are they going to live? Okay, and you? I'd just like to challenge um, Shaji Javid on something, because I know he's a smart guy, he knows his economics. Um, we talked about buy to let. How about help to buy? I mean, I would implore you to learn the lessons of the American housing boom and bust helped by encouraging people to take on debt in the housing market. It's great politics in the short term, but it can have catastrophic economic effects. So isn't it time we stopped putting treasury money behind subsidizing debt in the mortgage market and just built some more okay. homes? I'll, well, come, well, to you, I'll come to you in a minute. Okay. But I, I, I'd like to hear Harry Harmon over so. Harry Harmon. On that point, well, good too. I mean, the most important thing about housing and the starting point is that people need housing to live in. And the difficulty is, is if, if it becomes just a question of investment, you know, investment in people because they're compensating for not having a pension or investment because they see it, the property market zooming up. So they uh, invest and buy in cash overseas buyers. And I think that we definitely need, and the, Martin's right, it's a supply and a demand issue. We haven't built enough homes. We need to have a massive building program. And that includes affordable housing built by councils, because if you do help to buy, but you don't supply more homes, then all that happens is the prices go up and more people from abroad see it as a massive investment. And I don't know how uh, Sajib can say that there's not a house bubble in London. I mean, it's much worse than a bubble. The prices have gone mad and we, must, we urgently need more building. The woman, the woman in yellow up there, at the very back. I think, well, I don't have a problem with buy to let per se, what I find concerning is that a lot of the new builds that were designated under help to buy, you know, to bring first time buyers onto the property market, are actually be so being sold off plan in East Asia. And I think to me that's a problem because as someone who wants to use help to buy, if that is being let as an investment, it defeats the purpose. But what do you do about it? Martin Sorrell said this is a big city, it has worldwide trading relations, people want to put their money here. I think in that case, if you, you know, I'm, if homes that cost, you know, 500,000 or a million, if, you know, if that's being taken up by, you know, people as a second investment or as a second property, it's not as concerning as if new homes that are being built with the intention that help to buy scheme will, you know, be, be used for first time buyers. I think those should be restricted to resident buyers who actually plan to live in them. Yeah. Help to be buy should be for residents not being used as an investment for a second property. Kirsty Williams. I, I, I agree that part of the problem is a cultural uh, problem. Uh, we often see uh, houses as an investment rather than bricks and mortar and homes for people uh, to live in. That lady's point about key workers is absolutely crucial. We're in danger of creating such an imbalance in our uh, society, which isn't good uh, for, for anybody, even those who can afford uh, to, to live here and buy properties. The lack of key workers uh, is, is going to be a, a real problem uh, for them. I think we do need to address the issue of the number of houses that are being built, the type of houses uh, that are being uh, built. Uh, I'd love to get back to a situation where uh, we are, uh, we're really focusing on uh, the uh, 
whether it be councils or whether it be registered social landlords, you know, making properties uh, available. And I think potentially how you deal with the Russian oligarchs, then perhaps you use the taxation system such as a mansion tax to actually uh, gain some revenue for the Treasury that can be put back into building houses that ordinary people can afford to live in. And it's not just, it's a particularly acute problem in London, but believe me, it's, it's spreading. There are parts of Cardiff and there are parts even of rural Wales uh, where people who've been brought up in those communities cannot afford to live in them any longer. Okay. Just go back, um, so just go back to the idea of a bubble. You said it's not a bubble. How do you know it's not a bubble? What makes well, you think I, it's not I, a bubble? I, I rely, it's certainly very steep increases in price at the moment. I, I rely on the experts, the experts at the Bank of England. That's what they're there for. That's their job, and they do a very good job of monitoring the market. What the, this is generally for, these are called the macro fundamentals of the economy. And that's their job. It shouldn't be up to Parliament. You're not convincing Harriet. To, but if Harriet <laughs> doesn't I believe be in the, the independent Bank of England, Bank of England then, on, on that then basis. You know, she can talk. But let me come back to a couple other points that well, Harriet no, no, said. Just, just, just uh, answer that one. Well, I was going to say, if that's what it takes to be an expert on the Bank of England, I could be an expert on the Bank of England. There obviously is a housing bubble, and it needs to be addressed. And it's, you know, it's no good just saying that the Bank of England say that isn't well, one. Harriet, if you, get, if you go to my constituency of Bromsgrove in London, and you yeah. talk about a housing bubble, they won't take you seriously. No, I'm not saying so nationally. To address the whole economy, but, yeah, and we've Jim, already but, talked house, house building is at its lowest peacetime level since 1920. Well, and actually, the, houses well, let, being, the houses that are being built yeah. in London are not <clears throat> affordable. This theatre is due to be knocked down, the land sold, and it to be rebuilt on a smaller footprint. Do you think there'll be affordable housing here in this area? What chance of that? A Charing Cross hospital just along the road, they're knocking parts of that down. How much of that is going to be well, affordable okay. housing? Well, let, Local let people me, need let, to live locally. Well, Yeah, let, me, let me just uh, let me introduce some facts to Billy's argument. Billy talked about inflation before being one of the major reasons. Inflation is at 1.8 percent, one of the lowest levels we've seen below the target rate of 2 percent. Billy talked about social housing. And so did Harriet. Under Labour, social housing fell by 420,000 units. Under this government, it's up by 150,000 units. Billy talked about household debt going up. And though that's responsible, household debt was 170% of average earnings under the previous government in 2009, and it's now down to 140%. So it's actually down. I know these are inconvenient facts, but these are the facts. These are not inconvenient facts for you. you have to uh, the average wages are down by a hundred, uh, a th uh, 1,600 pounds since the general election. That's average wages and, are and down. So how do you expect people to be able to afford and, and to get on the housing ladder, not just in London, but even in Bromsgrove? Yeah, but then, then you have to look at why our average wage is down. And because and our country went through the Great Recession, which was the deepest recession in almost 100 years. So, of course, people's earnings average were hit. Average so wages are down because, because workers right. no but longer have proper representation in the workplace. Wait a minute. You've, you've put forward what you call inconvenient truths, and I think Harriet ought to have a chance to answer the inconvenient truths. Well, I think that, you know, everybody knows. The, the idea that we're going to be told that everybody is miles better off and you know living standards are risen i think it just looks completely out of touch people are struggling to make ends meet pay is stagnant costs are going up and i just think producing a mouthful of figures to say uh, you know, here's all the indicators that say it's fine and the recovery, it's on its way. People will say, well, yeah, the recovery just, just, hasn't arrived just, at my door, so I think it's just out this. of touch. I was just going to come on before you started to say that the fact that there is no inflation or limited inflation, in fact, the Bank of England is worried about deflation. And you see house prices increasing at the rate, and you hear just the apocryphal evidence from the people in the audience. Surely that demonstrates there's a house bubble. Surely that does. Because house prices, as you hear, in Stevenage or where else, are going up at a very rapid rate at a time when we don't have inflation in the system. And the authorities are worried about that fact and the fact that we'll have deflation as a result. Yeah, um, London or, or UK-wide? Well, I think, I think it's, it's at its height in London. And what do you do I, about a well, bubble well, like well, that? What well, can well, you look, do about look, it? Look, be, be blunt about it. Uh, uh, buy to lead was a political move. It was a move that was very help popular. Help to buy. Yeah, so, help, yes, yeah, sorry, help to buy was a political move. It was done in order to stimulate electoral support because it would be extremely popular. The, the, the problem is, you know, be careful what you wish for. Prior to the election, it has resulted in significant 
house price inflation. Yeah, you can in a second. I just want to go to the man up there in the, on the second row from the back. Yes, Susan. Well, Sajid's talking about how the Bank of England didn't see this, is not seeing this coming, but last time I checked, they didn't see the last problem that came along. That's the first thing. Second of all, um, the Bank of England doesn't actually, doesn't, when they actually calculate for inflation, doesn't actually put house prices in that doesn't actually put it in the calculations, apparently. I'm not sure, but... Yeah, well, actually, well, first of all, the reason the Bank of England didn't see the last problem, which I think you're referring to the credit crisis, is because Labour took away responsibility of oversight from the Bank of England, and they gave it to a new quango called the FSA. I mean, these are the inconvenient facts that Harry has to confront. And now we've given that power back to the Bank of England because it shouldn't have been taken away in the first place. May I just address the mm. help to buy mm. issue? Because a number of people have uh, raised it. You know, help to buy, why have we introduced that? It is because there is plenty of evidence that there are many people, especially young people, that can afford mortgage payments, they can comfortably afford mortgage payments, but they don't have rich parents that can help them get a 40 or 50,000 pound deposit. I make no apologies to help people get on the housing ladder and f have their own home and meet their aspiration. That's right. the purpose of Help to Buy, and I'm glad that it's working. It's also a temporary scheme, unlike the US scheme, where the Bank of England has powers of control over some of the parameters, and it will, be, it will last three years. It has a three-year shelf life, and I think that's the right way to intervene in the market okay. for a temporary process that addresses this issue. It is just not true to say that the global financial crisis was caused by anything that the Labour government did or by us setting up the Financial Services Authority. That is just absolutely ridiculous. And also the Conservatives were arguing for us to deregulate financial right. services let's, when we were in so government. So let's, not re let's, not then, from we? them. let's not rewind that argument which we've had many, many <laughs> times here. There's a pub in Hackney where every time you say that and you say that, they have to drink a glass of wine. <laughs> Uh, because they're so fed up with it. Uh, the woman there, and then I get to go on to another question. Have I Got News For You is back and everyone's delighted.